<laughs> and hello again, and while Barney here has a well and rest after a long walk, I thought we'd make a video that's something a bit different today. Um, because normally I make videos about one particular bike of mine, it's like a project as it were, but this time due to the lockdown, progress has been really slow on my various projects. So instead, what I thought we'd do is do a review of all my different bikes, all my different projects, and we'll go through progress to date and what we want to do in the future. So what's been very difficult to make any progress at all because everything's in lockdown, um, we can do some small changes at least. And I have been buying quite a lot of expensive gear uh, online, so let's make a start then. And while Barney here has a well and rest, we'll look at my bikes. I know, I don't know. However, before all that, about a month ago, before the lockdown started, I did take some video at Jeff's workshop of progress there. So we'll start then by looking at that video, and then when we've seen that, we'll come back and we'll carry on talking about my projects. So here we go. Okay, so here we are back at Jeff's workshop again. It's all changed. The builders are in. Go on. Builders, that's you. Builders? Yeah. So what are you doing, Jeff? You put a little yeah. wall up here. Keeping the rain out. Well, the rain's delayed. Yeah, you've been just delayed. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, this has been moved. This is not the lay that was sat here, because that's now been moved no. over here, you Mitchell, yeah. that we mentioned a while ago. And this big old thing, God knows what this is. It's a Mitchell. No, 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 it it's is a Mitchell. Wood a Mitchell. A town Woodhouse Mitchell. It's, old one. This is actually old, newer than that one. Oh, right. It does look uh, it. It does look it. Jupiter, did it say? Is it well, you can get things a couple of years old that look older than some things yeah. that are a hundred years yeah. old. Yeah. I mean, it just so, depends how people have treated okay. them. Okay, so the reason for all this change... I mean, me. Yes, of course. So the reason for this changing around things is what, Jeff? Well, it's been for a while. funny enough, the motor's just... I've just been doing some machining on it at weekend or for This is on your, yeah. your standard yeah. Churchill Cup over got, there. The, I think the motor's been going... Tired. It's been tired and it's starting to get hot now, very yes. hot, yeah. and it's struggling. Okay, and that is the good old that small one here, yeah. the Churchill. It, it will Oops. still work, but it's, it's it is a new motor. It's getting the motor's getting warmer than I'd like, yes. and it's yes. not. It, if you put a lot of power to a right. load on it, it, it just goes. Mm, right. Okay. So you do like have a new motor, morning, yeah. but you don't want to fit it to this thing because. It's kind of like good money after bad. Well, it's for, it was off. It's off the Bridgeport. I was, yeah, I've got it. That. Bridgeport. Okay. So going back to over here, then. Da -da 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 -da. Make sure I can see what's going on. Da -da -da. There we go. Oh yeah. Yeah. So going back over here, then. Your big Mitchell here. That's sort of ready to rock. It's almost ready to go. Uh, it it wants positioning on the ground. Right. Uh, on timber. Yeah. Uh, and all I've got to do. I thought I'll just get this out of the way. Yeah. These bits here. Uh, or it needs. What I need. What I've got to do is rewire the motor before I push it in, and then I can get uh, virtually everything. Right, okay. Because we've had this a while. Well, I, I mean, you've had that for what two or three years now. It probably. I remember going to go and pay for it. Yes. Yeah, behind all this wood. But it's a good old lathe, and it's a big thing. It's a good. Like that is a good. That. Uh, it's in mint condition, isn't it? Because it's it, not it's been used much, has it? It's in very, very yeah. good condition. Yeah. I believe yeah. it come out of college. Yeah, so it's not much use. Yeah. 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 Okay, so behind like wood and ladders and whatever. It's better than the one I used to have. Oh, no, it looked like someone had been using it as an anvil. Okay. Uh, right, so that's going to become your standard um, everyday lathe, is it, Jeff? Is that, 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 that no, will replace the it, Churchill? I've got a lot of work to do on it. That yes. Ideally, what I could do with is that's got the uh, gap bed and you can machine big diameters. Yes. Uh, and ideally what I got it for is, I can finish boring my crankcases for the Honda. Right, okay. On a mandrel. There's enough room big enough. to machine a mandrel, yeah, yeah. clamp them and, and finish yeah, doing around the last, a bit. You yeah, the last journal. Yeah. But, Over there, look. you can't do it on this, because it's not got the room. Right, it's this thing here. So where's this going then? Is this going to go against the wall? <sighs> Well, if that goes, that little church. Okay, up, it's going to go. There. Okay. Yeah. To, to be honest, there's not a great deal of capacity wise difference in this and that oh, church. Right. It looks a hell of a lot bigger. That's it's, for sure. it, it, it's, it's got the length. It's about another 20 inches. Right. It, it, it's got the length. But not it's the even another 18 okay. inches longer than that one. Okay, okay. So for the time being, then, you can't 
machine anything because that's yeah that's dead and that's not quite ready yet and that's not quite ready yet um, so instead you're busy getting the outer what do you call this place the outer shed ready to move this thing back well yeah. I thought if I get rid of that and put a bench here with a compressor under it oh right you're gonna put a bench I've on. got all this room then to do the painting right okay and then this one here and, and then this is gonna yeah. go back indoors is it yeah, yeah okay hopefully this will go in there yeah well, so I've got the once it's got the motor on it and everything it can go against the wall yes. and then you can do the rest of it at uh, your leisure at, okay at, at, you know okay. as, as and when okay usually when right okay so i'll leave you to carry on doing whatever you're doing painting bits of wood yeah, including it, black it's, paint. it's it's creosote creosote oh it, god it's actually a tub that our lads give us all right okay it's, it's the creosote that they don't make anymore yeah, okay the good stuff in the, the, the stuff that's got yeah, all the yeah. uh, and by the way the wall that we can see there is not the wall of this building here that's the wall of next door's garage mm -hmm. uh, which you kind of like borrowed effectively Okay. But temporarily. Temporarily, yeah. And now you're putting up a little wall of your own to keep out the rain and the cold. Okay. So while you do that, I'll go inside and check out what else has been going on. And now here we are, a week later, and that Mitchell lathe is now where it's going to be forever, basically. And the other old Mitchell is here still, in pieces. And on the floor, I notice Jeff's been busy trying to no doubt wire up a new motor and on this side his uh, walls now finished it's all been treated and so on and sure enough he's made a little bench there with his uh, compressor tank underneath so yeah, it's been pretty busy oh and that's the spares bike frame there going rusty it's been there a while but I think plans are afoot to uh, get that thing blasted and ready for paint soon but when Jeff comes back from making some more tea we'll uh, talk about that and see what else has been going on in the last few days well you, I mean you've got your little work top there now little workbench thing in that side oh, that, that's fitted there now I've managed yeah, to put that. the comp bike thing up yeah. that's all out the way for the way bit. your good Mitchell is over here your newish one anyway or the that, nice yeah. one now is that now ready to be used once you've well I've, I've got to get on the wood Right. But what I wanted to do with it, oh, okay, because right now it's on steels, because yeah. because it, it's all steel behind that, I wanted to just drag it out again. Yes. And put some panel all that with timber, so it's it keeps tries to keep it what a bit warmer and drafty. There's a gaps in the steel, so keeps oh, right. it a bit so, drafty. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, because it's wood on top, but it's steel. Yeah, there's steel there. sheeting, and I've got yeah, wood on some top wood. Okay. So I was going to panel it inside, so yeah. it helps to keep the heating. The, oh. Well, it, it keeps it a bit more. Or oh, the cold in, I'm not sure which. Okay, and then this one here, your old Mitchell. Uh, I see you've got that uh, motor down there. You're doing some work on it. That is the one, yeah, but I'm not sure if it goes the right way. <laughs> All right, is that going to be for this? Is it? It, it is, yeah, but I was just going to wire it up. I and can't remember works. if it goes the right way. Oh, it spins the right way. Yeah, which means then it's going to have to be altered, which is more hassle. Well, it, it, it sometimes they have a diagram in the lid, and it tells you exactly what to do. But this one doesn't. Unfortunately, <laughs> that doesn't. Oh. Now every, everything falls into the category of well, one step forward, uh, two steps back. Okay, okay, but you know, fair enough. You get in there, you get in there. You got your wall done. I've, well, I mean, it's. Uh, I'm happy now because at least, well, it's made it a lot neater. Neat, and it's got rid of all loads of timber and things that yes, <laughs> they're hanging know. around. Okay, okay. And then we turn around then and we come back in the workshop. <laughs> okay, so here we are back in the shed, and I see my Kawasaki's now got its front forks on it. And have you. Yeah, you bodged on a little stem just so we can it's see. It's not been bodged. All right, bodged. That's not the standard stem. It's just two aluminium spacers to mimic a stem. Mimic. Well, it's within a few thou of where it would be. It's, yeah. Okay. So uh, well, it's either that or tap. No, it's fine. Put the stem in and put bearing right. races in, and then you've got to tap it. Yeah, I've got the bearing races out. Much. Now we have uh, bought something from eBay. We bought a Kawasaki Z650 yeah. lower yoke and stem. That's not here yet. When it arrives, we'll knock out the stem and. Uh, it's not going to change it. anything. No, no, with no. The problem that. that okay, yeah. Be. So we're going to. So our problem is that. No, your problem. Okay. <laughs> our problem. Our <laughs> problem is that because this is a Z thousand tank, it's a bit longer than the original uh, Z six fifty tank that, that was on this frame, and therefore to get it to sit right, and not hit the forks on full lock, as we now demonstrate, 
Well, it's yeah, it's just enough. touching that, yeah. that, and that is that enough? Yes, it is for me. Well, anyway, the problem is, yeah, but the you thing is, you put your back. clamp round it. Yes, well, the clamps are quite thin, thank yeah, you. yeah. So, our problem is that it really needs to come back a wee bit, maybe there or whatever. And if we do that, yeah, then it's... if you look at the other side panel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you can actually sit well, obviously, if you take that one on there, you can see yeah. better here. This early Z1 rather lovely side panels from Japan. Uh, if we sort of pretend where they're going to go, something like that. What they should do is, the end of that should hit the end of that or thereabouts, it should flow sort of like that's going to go there, if you can see, and they don't because the tank is too far back. And to be honest, there's not a lot you can do about that because these are ABS, they're not fiberglass, so you can't cut them off or anything. And uh, yeah, it might look a little bit crap, <laughs> basically, because as I say, it doesn't look like a Z1. It looks like some bodge, which I don't like. So yeah, um, if it's like that, for example, there's quite a big gap there. Now, because I'm probably going to paint the bike a dark colour, maybe black, maybe dark blue, then with the frame being black as well, it might not look as bad as it does right now. You won't even notice it when, it, when, all's, when all's said and done. Particularly if I get the seat as well. So, uh, yeah. So we've done a bit of a, a compromise now. I want the tank as far, as far as possible. It's but this then is maybe the lock. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I'm happy to have a, a small amount of lock. I mean, yeah, originally, I mean, I've got to do Cassie, mate. Yeah. That's got no look at all. So. Originally, when I was going to do it, I was just going to have a, like a stainless yes. box like as that, a yeah. side panel. Yes, I know. And have a seat unit on it, single yes. seat yeah, unit. Yeah, so the possible. tank, I could afford the tank to come back. Further back, yeah, yeah. At um, least, uh, probably, you know, wherever it was comfortable, and then I could yeah, adjust yeah, the seat yeah. to yeah. it. So we've got a bit of a mm -hmm. problem there. Um, I mean, there you've got, you've got, there's lots of room there, so I can go that, from that position. You see, you don't want. You see the tank there. You don't you don't want that coming too far there. You want you want to see a bit of, you want to see well, a bit of frame round there. Yes, but it's more important the fact that that well is not going to be. Yeah, but if you squash it up too much, it doesn't. In my opinion, it doesn't well, look right there. Yeah. Well, but that's that, that's because we can. I mean, there are some things we can do though. Um, uh, what we can do is this has got a notch here. The only other we thing we can notch a bit more. Just to bring it back a wee bit. The only other thing is to put Z650 panels oh, on no, it. Oh, no, no, no. Well, that is that would work better with the frame because it's. I know, I know. Yeah. But if I wanted a 650, I would buy a Z650. Well, yeah, but then um, another alternative is just as I've done with the seat unit is go for a fiberglass version, which then you can cut up and change and play around with it. Well, I had some of these in fiberglass, didn't you? Yeah. And where the, are they now? Them blue ones that that guy come from. All oh, right, so they've gone. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have a look around. Perhaps I can find. Um, so I mean, oh, one so you, can you can cut up a little bit and make it a little bit better because right now that combo doesn't really work for me. Um, you know, that should be there. And I can't push the tank too far forward because then I lose all the steering lock. So ah, the joys of uh, the joys of custom bike rules. <laughs> anyway, apart from that, no, Jeff, what else has been going on with the bike? Um, oh, today I've got back my block. Board. Always done it. Yeah, board and hold. Ah. But I did make a pro I did make a slight error because I went to see him yesterday. He says, yeah, it's not quite ready yet, mate. He's bored it, but it's not yet been honed. Ah. And we went in the workshop. He showed me around. It's very interesting. He's got E-type jack locks and that mine. Aston Martin, yeah, stuff. Yeah, mine. Yeah. Um, so no, oh, hang on a minute. Stop. Before you just finish it off with a honing, could you put the block in your blasting cabinet and blast it for me and get all the all paint off? He says, no, mate, you're too late, because his plastic cabinet is so aggressive, it's full of very hard grit. Ah, uh, right. It would just destroy the... the Aluminium. Yeah, so he says, no, no, okay, fine, he says. Oh, well, so that's something I need to address at some point. Need be blasting, really, not yeah, yeah. shot. Well, we know a man with a big There's different so. sorts of blasting, isn't yes, there? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, probably, I'll have to take it all up and take it to Lister and hopefully let him, he'll let me borrow his... Uh, it's speed blaster. As long as it's thoroughly washed, yes. once it, I oh, mean, yeah, yeah. scrupulously washed, yeah. Oh, yeah, it'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. Well, I've been busy at home painting my engine at the moment, so that's what I'm doing. Ah. Ah. Uh -huh. Painting done the engine. I've done the cam cover. I've done the, the sump cover. Ah. And I just about to start on the engine. Well, what are you going to do with nuts and bolts? I've got some nuts and bolts. Nuts and bolts will be new, polished oh. stainless steel. Oh, for all the cam bolts. Oh yes. Well, so you I'm don't have to put them on the inside. I mean, you've, I've got some cam. The middle cam cap 
you could just use the originals. Well, well, we'll you don't have to see. I'm just trying to. No, I've not got any sort of second hand fastened on it at all. No. Um, yeah, but there's so many different lengths. Oh, we get a kit, don't you? You get a kit. Unless you can get a kit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Won't be cheap, but you can get one. Mate, you can buy them performance studs that they put in. They screw actual studs in them, put nuts on, you know, for your main 8 mils. Well, yeah, yeah we'll cross that bridge. Um, yeah, so, so far then, that's about it. Um, as I say, we have ordered a stem and a lower um, yoke from eBay due today. Not quite here yet, but never mind. It was 20 quid, I think, plus about 10 quid for um, the postage. It was rip off. There you go. Um, yeah, so that's progress so far. 9 yeah. 9 oh, which, which is like they're making the money back on the postage, I guess. Anyway, anyway. Yes, yeah, so that's plugs to date, and we'll come back in a few days' time and see what else has been going on. And now here we are back again, and as you can see from the video there, the Kawasaki Z project, the whole chassis is still at Jeff's, and I can't go and see that, can't go and work on it for the time being, while the engine cases and the newly machined block, I took to a local company called Camcoat for some high-tech uh, ceramic-based finish, uh, and that was about a week before the lockdown started. So, of course, they've still got those cases and uh, I have no idea when I'm going to get them back, but I suspect it won't be for a few weeks yet. So, I can't really make any progress with the engine either. Yeah, so the Z is basically on hold and I can't really do much about that. However, moving on with the Guzzi here, you might spot I have added one small item to the Guzzi and that's this little fender here, which arrived yesterday. Now, this little thing, um, it's originally made for a Triumph T100 and I noticed it on Amazon Prime and so I ordered it and it arrived as I said yesterday, not even opened it yet and the reason why it caught my eye is because A it's quite short which is well wanted and it's also wider than something like a alloy mudguard from a classic British bike supplier I've actually got one somewhere but it's too narrow to cover a slightly wider tyre here, I think it's a 110, and it'd be fine for 90 but not a 110. So I wanted something a bit wider, and this hopefully will fit the bill. It's also, as you can see, got the mounting holes already prepared, which makes life a lot easier, because what I'll have to do is to modify this um, cross brace here, this fork brace, which we made some time ago. In fact, I'm not quite sure you can see that, so let me refocus and uh, we'll start again. And now I've moved the camera, hopefully you can see this fork brace here we made some time ago. Now we made that because the original fork brace uh, was a bit battered and it had been powder coated silver, I didn't like it, so we made this instead. But looking at this mudguard here, I think it's, it's not going to work because... Oh, I, don't I, don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, let me see. A bit tricky because I'm trying to reach over and not get in the way of the, uh, in the, way of the camera. But yeah, do you think that will work? No, I don't think so because it's not quite wide enough to um, cover these holes here, unfortunate. Almost, almost, but not quite, I don't think. So, yeah, perhaps that fork brace will have to be replaced by something. As I say, I do have the original fork brace, but um, it needs a bit of work, I think. It's in the garage somewhere, so I have to dig it out. But that fork brace has the advantage of being curved on the underside, which would hopefully match this curve here. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but actually it was quite cheap. It's about £11, I think. Um, as I say, it's made for a T100 Triumph. But luckily, now, luckily it seems to fit quite well. Now, T100 Triumphs have 19-inch um, front wheels, whereas mine's got a 18-inch. And normally that would be a problem, because if you had a full-size mudguard, that difference in circumference would be noticeable. But um, with having such a small mudguard like this, it's really not a problem, I think. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. As I say, we'll have to probably change this this um, fork brace here. Bit of a pity because I quite like that. But uh, yeah, it's something to do when the lockdown ends and I can get back to Jeff's workshop with his millers and his uh, lathe and so on. So yeah, that's fine. And now we'll zoom back a bit. Hopefully you can see how this mudguard fits that tyre quite nicely. I will have to modify or in fact replace the brace, but so be it. Moving on then, another purchase I've made recently is I bought a Le Mans Mark 1 cockpit fairing for the bike. It's on its way, should be here any day now. 
And when it arrives, we'll put it on the bike and see how it looks. And I think that fairing will help you balance the look of the bike a lot better because right now I've got that big tank, big seat unit, but nothing much at the front of the bike. So um, I've always liked the Le Mans Mark 1 fairing, so hopefully it'll look pretty good. So moving on then to the paintwork, let me go and get the tank and the seat. We'll put it back on the bike and we can talk about that. Okay, so there's the tank and the seat back on the bike. Although I'm just holding this because it's just resting on a bit of wood. And one problem with the lockdown is that all the main workshops I use are closed. So I can't buy any material, I can't buy any steel or aluminium plate. And I can't get any welding done. So I can't complete the mounts for this seat unit for the time being. No great problem, but there you go. Um, yeah, so with that in place then, um, let's talk about the colour scheme of the bike. I mean, clearly the cockpit fairing, the front mud guard, and this seat unit needs to be painted to match the tank. And a lot of folks say, oh, just leave it polished aluminium. You should, you should have left this thing polished aluminium. Um, no, it's a nightmare to take care of. It looks good on Instagram, it might look good in a photograph, but in the real world, it scratches so easily, it dulls, it's just a nightmare to uh, maintain. And that's why I painted this beautiful aluminium tank. And why I'm gonna paint this seat unit to match. Um, now in terms of colour, I may change it. Actually, it's red right now, but I may change it. And what I'm definitely gonna do is to add some sort of graphics because this is one heck, this, this tank here is one heck of a big tank. It's an endurance racing tank. It holds about five and a half gallons, I think. And it's just a big mass of red on the bike. And also this, this uh, seat unit here is quite big as well. So just having some great big red thing is, is not really gonna work, I think. So I did consider just adding some pinstripes, you know, around here, around here. And I really like the pinstripes I've got on my Norley that's in the garage right now. But that bike's got a very slim tank, so there's a very slim profile, um, and the pinstripes work really well with that kind of late 60s look that I went for. But I don't think it's gonna work with this bike because the tank's so wide, the whole bike's a lot wider, a lot chunkier, the seat's a lot bigger and so on. So I think a few pinstripes is gonna get lost in the general sort of scheme of the bike. So what I'm looking to do is find some sort of design that works with these curves. Now this uh, tank here actually reminds me a little bit of the tank on my MHR, which I'll show you in a minute. And that's got a graphic that starts here, widens out, and then goes up over there like that, like sort of uh, that sort of shape. But if I mimic that look, I'm a bit worried that people say, oh, look at that, you copied a Ducati, which I don't want to do. So right now, I've got no particular plan in mind, I've got no particular uh, colour scheme in mind, but I do know it's going to have to be quite curvy. So whatever I do, it's not just going to be a stripe, a speed stripe and so on. It's going to have to be something a bit more complicated, uh, complex than that. And so in conclusion then, I'm not quite sure what the paint scheme will look like. And indeed, I'll have to wait until I get the cockpit fairing in place and the front fender and so on, before I can sort of stand back and, and make a good plan. But then again, if you've got any good ideas for a colour scheme, then please comment below and I'll certainly consider it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so let's take this seat off now because it's a bit precarious. Put it away so it can't get damaged. And um, here we go. Now I have been doing some work on the wiring, but not really enough. So it's difficult to get any sort of enthusiasm for it because I know the bike's going to be here for months yet. So it's difficult to sort of get stuck in and actually get the damn thing done. Particularly when I'm quite busy, even with the lockdown, I've got lots to do. I've got my mum staying with me right now, so I'm making endless cups of tea and making sure she's okay. And I've also got a couple of elderly neighbours who need a bit of help. I do shopping for them and so on. And of course I've got the dog, he still needs his walks. So I'm actually quite busy. Yeah, so i would love to get on with this and do the wiring at some point. But um, first I need to sort out the front mud guard, wait for the cockpit frame to arrive, get that sorted out, get it mounted. Again though, I've got to wait before I can go along to just workshop again and get those brackets sorted out. Yeah, so that's the, uh, the progs to date on the Guzzi. So moving on then. And next, here we are looking at the tank of my Ducati MHR, which actually looks quite similar to the tank on my Guzzi now. I'm just gonna point out that this graphic here could work on the Guzzi. The only problem is of course that everyone who knows about Ducati will say, ha ha, you copied that from a Ducati, which I don't wanna do. But maybe something like that might work different colour scheme maybe without these blocks, who knows, who knows. 
So uh, yeah, something to consider. Now, as far as the MHR is concerned, I'm not really too much with it at all. I've still got to sort out this bloody light pot here. It won't go together. So I need to take the whole thing off, take the tank off, take the bodywork off, unplug the wires for this thing and get it off the bike. Because right now I just can't make any progress at all because I can't see what's going on. Um, but I should have done that weeks ago. I've just not been bothered because, I don't know, it's difficult to get any enthusiasm to work on it when uh, I know it's not going to move from here for months and months and months. Because this bike can't move until the guzzy out there is also moved and that requires me to finish working on it. So yeah, on hold at the moment, a bit frustrating, but whatever, whatever. Anyway, moving on then, let's look at what's next. And now here we are in the garage and here we have my Ducati 888 SP rep and uh, it needs nothing but a good clean. It's not been cleaned for a while, a bit dusty. And probably also a new battery because I think the battery is tired. Uh, yeah, apart from that, it's good to go, so no work required, thank God. And all I really need is time to ride a damn thing, which right now I don't really have. And indeed I've not ridden this bike since since last summer, I don't think. Yeah, so nothing to do. So uh, let's move on to the next bike. And so next up then is my Merch 131, my 2.15 litre Evo Softail custom bike. And about a year and a half ago, we did a lot of work on this, updated all the electronics, speedo, taco, uh, instrumentation, uh, we fitted motor gadget switches and an M unit, rewired the whole bike. We also uh, modified the handlebar position by making these new risers, which brought the bars back about an inch, which as I'm getting older is uh, quite handy. And we also remade the mounts for the four controls, which brought them back as well. So again, small changes, but it made the bike a lot more comfortable to ride. Um, the bike needs nothing except a good polish and some air in the tyres and maybe some juice for the battery, and it's good to go. However, however, this video is also about future plans. And so I do have some plans to make some big changes to the bike. The overall look of the bike hasn't changed since I built it in about 2000, 2001. And although I do like the look of it, it does sort of um, split opinions. Some people love it and some people hate it. They say it doesn't look like a Harley, this headlamp unit is horrible, they say. Uh, it doesn't work at all, blah, blah, blah. No, I quite like it. But as I say, I do want to make some big changes. And I'm not going to go into the details yet. I'll just say it's going to have completely new bodywork, new paint, and probably new wheels, brakes, and uh, front forks, at the very least. Now, all those changes are going to be very expensive to do because I'm not going to fit crap to my best bike. Um, so that may take a while. Perhaps this time next year we'll make a start. So let's move on then to a bike that does need some more work and that I'll be doing quite soon. And that bike is this. This is my Norley and it's got a Norton featherbed frame, a replica frame, made by Norley in Wales and in it we have a 1979 XL1000 Harley Sportster Ironhead motor which has a great big s, &S carb on it. It's been tuned a little bit, it's got electronic ignition, obviously these one-off pipes, two by two on either side. And yeah, I really like this bike. It's just a damn pitch of a chance to ride it very much. Um, now going back in time, I bought the frame in around 2012 and the bike was the first assembled and running about 2000 and I think it was late 2013, 14. The problem there was I have finished it I then got a back injury, which meant I couldn't do a damn thing for about a year. I had terrible um, pain, I had sciatica, which was awful. So it just sat here for about two years, and then I did a bit more work on it, it and I ended up um, repainting the tank. It was originally um, polished aluminium, but it painted. Did a few more changes here and there. We remade the um, rear sets. Wasn't happy with the first ones I had. These are all one off. They run on uh, bearings. Really nicely done by my mate Jeff. Added things like a screen to the velocity stack here, keep bumblebees out of the uh, carb. Now I would like to fit a proper air filter, but trying to find one that works and looks right on the bike is very difficult. Um, yeah, so I have been doing some sort of slow change to it over the years, but there's still changes I want to make. And one of them is quite simple. I've got to cure all the oil leaks. I've got a little oil leak down there, 
got another one on the other side and um, I think most of them are just simple things where perhaps the oil lines need pinching up a little bit or changing in some way but uh, yeah they need doing it's unfortunate I don't have a lift because trying to work out what's going on under the bike is quite tricky I'm not, <laughs> I'm not getting that young so um, yeah I might actually end up taking this to somebody else who does have a lift to get the bike lifted up and so we can see what's going on because right now it's a bit of a nightmare trying to get underneath there um, what else what else yes what I will do I've got about three areas that I want to improve on the bike this year and I'm not going to make like 20 videos about it I'm just going to make three which will cover each of those main areas or those three main areas and the first one is to the suspension particularly the rear suspension because right now I've got some cheap and cheerful white SS shocks can't argue with them but they're very well made for the price but they have no real adjustability apart from preload and um, on the bike I think they're a little bit too soft compared to the front and also they're a bit too short so I could do with something a bit longer and a bit firmer and also with some adjustable damping would be nice too now I have found some that would suit the bike perfectly and they're made by Hagon they're called Hagon Nitros and I bought a pair for my guzzy so yeah I should get them except there's a small problem or rather a big problem with fitting them to my Norley here so let's go back and look at the guzzy and I'll tell you why and here they are on my guzzy these are Hagon Nitros and they're great because you can specify the length and the spring preload that you want for your bike and obviously they will help you with that the sales team are really helpful and um, what they have is a stainless steel body and a stainless steel spring uh, which in my case I had powder coated black at the factory that's an option also an option is to have different colors for the aluminium parts of the shock in my case I went for silver but you can have I think black and gold and no doubt some other ones and uh, yeah pretty happy with them you get adjustable preload obviously and also a 10-way adjustable damping which is what I really wanted so I'm really happy with them and I'd love to fit these to my Norley the only problem with them though is that they're actually quite wide they're quite fat and chunky which isn't a problem with my guzzy because it's got a great big endurance racing tank and obviously it's quite a chunky bike overall but on my Norley I think it might look a little bit out of place and in comparison I've got the white SS shocks that I've got fitted to my Norley um, side by side here so you can see the difference the springs much fatter and the body's much fatter so yeah I'm not quite sure if these shocks would work I say work would look right on on my Norley because the bike is very slim and um, I don't want to keep that sort of 60s late 60s early 70s vibe so my only concern is as I say the thickness now I could go ahead and buy these and get them specced for my Norley anyway get them fitted and hopefully they'll be fine but that's quite an expensive mistake if I don't like the look of them however I do have an alternative I've got another set of shocks that I think I might well fit to the Norley so let's go back to the bike and have a look at that and here they are now I have shown you these before in a video a long time ago and these are progressive expensive remote reservoir shocks made for a Harley so they'll go straight on they're about an inch longer than the ones I've got now the YSS ones and they'll work very very well I think so you might ask the question why didn't I fit them about a year or two ago and the reason is because I thought at the time they were probably a bit too modern looking for the bike what I wanted was something that had that same performance like the nitros but looked more old-fashioned if you like so I was a bit wary about fitting these but to be honest I'm going to do some more upgrades to the bike anyway so maybe these shocks might actually not be too bad for the bike I may be a little bit too uh, narrow-minded with these shocks so I might fit them just to sort of see how they look and if I like it they can stay and if I don't they can go and I'll uh, find something else to fit instead and so these YSS shocks can go and I'll fit the progressive shocks in their place I've not done that yet though because I've only got one bike lift and it's currently underneath my guzzy so I can't really lift this bike up to change the shocks just yet but I will do, I will do anyway that's one of the changes I want to make but there are two more and what I want to do is to fit new hand controls, new hydraulics which get rid of these dash pots now these work fine 
it's just that I think they don't look quite right on the bike and I would like to get some with an inbuilt reservoir just to make it look better that's all and also of course these are all second hand so some brand new ones would look a lot better I think now moving on then to the front end of the bike there are some changes I want to make here as well and the first one's quite easy I want to paint these silver fork sliders to be black rather than silver I'll probably go for sort of semi-gloss black um, now in an ideal world I would like to have this polished but because of the casting it's actually quite rough cast so I imagine trying to polish this would be an absolute nightmare so I'm going to go for black and I think that will help match the rest of the bike, the paintwork and so on I'm not sure what to do about this clamp here that's currently polished I might leave it polished or maybe I'll have it anodized black to match the black fork sliders I'm not sure yet, we'll see anyway, moving on and a quite expensive change to make is I want to change these brand new EBC discs no reason for it at all it's just that I think it will look better with floating discs rather than these solid discs now as it turns out EBC make a fantastic range of discs and they make one that looks just like this but that's floating and also the centerpiece here isn't dull stainless steel it's polished stainless steel and I think that'll look a lot better on the bike um, now in terms of the discs these discs I think are about £90 each so it's three of them and the new discs I want they're about £170 each so that, again that's quite expensive change but a very simple change so um, and that's something I wanted to do from the time I first built the bike I just couldn't afford to buy those discs at the time and finally there's one more change I want to make and that's to my homemade hydraulic clutch conversion now this slave cylinder here was originally made for a Honda Blackbird of all things and it's a bit battered it's a bit uh, you know it's seen better days it works but you know it could be better now I have bought an Oberon slave cylinder for my Kawasaki Z project recently and I was very impressed with it so I've ordered a brand new slave cylinder made for a Honda Blackbird to go on here no real reason for doing it it's just gonna look a lot better that's all and also I think I'll get rid of this black crinkly paint here and uh, just leave it polished now looking on this side of the bike some time ago I thought I had a leak from the seal here on this adapter plate so what we did was we took it off we machined a groove in it fitted an o-ring and put it back on the bike and hopefully no more oil leak except it does still leak and what I got wrong was I thought the oil leak was from here but it wasn't and the problem was that the oil runs down here on this little lip and finally runs down the bike so it's a bit tricky to see what was going on now the only other place it could come from is this bung here which was where the original I think foot peg mount was and um, that's actually sealed in really tight so I don't think it's that so the only other place it could be and I think the culprit is here which is the gear change um, shaft which goes through the chain case here it's got a seal on it and I think that seal is leaking not a lot but it needs sorting out so at some point I'm gonna have to take all this off the bike take the cam cover off and replace that little seal now I'm not checked yet but I think I do have to take everything off I don't think you can change it from the outside of the bike but we'll see we'll see yeah so a bit of a pain that one but uh, it needs sorting out at some point yeah so there's still lots of little small things to do with the bike and again I just wish I had more time to ride it and so there's a quick look at my various projects and bikes as you can see with six I've got plenty to keep me busy and in fact I do have one more bike I've got seven bikes all together or seven projects and I've forgotten to mention that seventh project so let's go back inside and we'll have a quick look at that and that seventh project is here tucked away in the corner covered in junk Cans of rubbish let's just move that out of the way that box out of the way and here we have sort of remnants of my this wild drag bike now this is now missing its uh, its wheels and brakes and forks the wheels have gone and then here's some dirt feet here look let's move that out of the way now the wheels have gone to my Z project the forks I've still got um, and the reason why I took it apart was because well I just couldn't really race it because um, I was hoping to race it at local events run by the NSA which is the National Sprint Association but it turns out they changed the rules over the last few years and they only allow bikes up to 12cc 
and also they now have much stricter noise regulations. Now obviously this thing is running an open pipe so it's going to break all of us limits without a problem even idle. And the engine is a 127 cubic inch Evo motor, an aftermarket motor, and that works out to be about 2100cc, so rather bigger than the limit of 1200. Personally I think it's a stupid idea because you can get a 1000cc Jixxer or um, BMW, you know, RR, whatever, SS, which uh, makes more power than this, but they allow that, but not this one. Yeah, so what I've got is a brand new motor, brand new primary belt, belt primary there, and a brand new 6 speed gearbox in a frame that I can't really use for the road because it's too low. Um, it was made, or rather, well, it was modified, um, and raked out quite a lot the front to drop the ground comes right down to the limit of two inches. So that's fine for a drag bike, but it's not fine for a road bike. You can't really ride it when it's so low. And given it's a high tail, it's kind of quite difficult to modify that. So I've no idea what I'm gonna do with this particular bike. My current sort of idea going forward is that I might see at some point if I can buy a standard Evo um, bike, a standard soft tail perhaps, uh, perhaps with a blown motor or a damaged motor, I can then take it all to bits, swap the engines over, swap all the transmission and um, primary over, and basically just build a kind of street sleeper where it looks like a standard bike, but it isn't. It's got a bloody great big 130 brake horsepower plus motor in it. But that's uh, an idea for the future. Even to buy an Evo Softail now with a, a rough running motor, you're looking at 5,000 quid. And I'm going to throw most of that away because I certainly wouldn't be keeping the brakes, the suspension and so on. Um, so it's something that I'm still unclear about. But as you can see I've got six other bikes to worry about, more projects to work on. So this for the time being can stay here. I'll cover it up again and uh, we'll come back to it another day. If anybody's got any bright ideas, um, you're more than welcome to suggest them in the comments. I mean, one problem with it, uh, a lot of people might say, oh, go and buy an aftermarket frame and then you'll be fine. You can get an aftermarket Evo soft tail frame and you can. The problem is, when you come to insure it, it's going to cost an absolute fortune and it's going to be a lot of hassle, a lot of problems involved. I know that because I only own one. So um, that, even for me, I'm getting quite old now. That's quite expensive bike to insure every year. But there you go. I guess if you can't afford it, you don't build them. So yeah, so there's the old remnants of my Evo drag bike. In fact, that tank is from my original drag bike, which had a Merch engine in it back in the day, about 10 years ago. So yeah, that's that one. So um, so right now, I've got no idea what I'm going to do with it. So for the time being, it can stay here. We'll cover it up again, keep the dust off it. And uh, we'll come back to it another day, when maybe I'll have more time and money to throw at the thing and do something with that. And now here we are, back where we started with the Guzzi. And the work I'm going to do with the Guzzi and the Norley and so on, um, I'm going to cover that in specific videos about those bikes. Because otherwise it's just going to get far too long and complicated. Yeah, so um, stay tuned as it were, and I'm sure we'll soon have some updates to make. And in fact, since I filmed the first part of this video this morning, I've had two deliveries today. One is for the Guzzi, it's going to be the Cockpit Fairy. And the other is a smaller package, which I guess is the Oberon slave cylinder for the Norley. But as I say, I'm not going to open them now and film all that, because this video is getting quite long as it is, and we'll save that for when I make a, a bike-specific or a project-specific video in the near future. So anyway, thanks for watching, and cheers. <laughs>